Yet another video brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry, the ministry that aims to take you to the house of the living God. It's so good to be with you today, my dear friend, on another day that the Lord has given us by His grace, by the grace of God, we will keep on going, we will press on, and we will receive the prize. I'm Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez, and I'm so happy to be with you today. It is another day that the Lord has given us, and by the grace of God, we're going to press in, and we're going to touch the hem of His garment. My dear friend, today is Sunday, and on Sunday, we pray Sunday deliverance prayers. And today, I want to pray with you special deliverance prayers that you will be set free from everything that is stopping you from knowing who you are. You need to know who you are as a child of God. It's so essential that you know who you are. My dear friend, those who know who they are, know who their God is. Because you can't know who you are unless you know who your God is. And we as born-again believers have a good God. We have a great God. He's the God of heaven and earth. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the one who created everything that is seen and unseen. You need to know who He is in order for you to know who you are. And today I'm trusting and I'm believing God that if you are struggling with this thing of not knowing who you are, you will be set free and God will do what only He can do in your life. And I want to start this out by taking a bit of a reading from the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 7 in the Amplified Version. It says, I am writing to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called to be saints, God's people, and set apart for a sanctified life, that is, set apart for God and for His purpose, grace to you and peace. We'll stop right there. We won't go further over there. Now, my dear friend, in the scripture are revealed certain things that we need to know as born-again believers. There are certain things that we need to know. It's not by chance that this is written like this in the Bible. It's not by chance that Apostle Paul spoke like this as he was opening up the book of Romans. He was affirming the children of God in Rome. He was speaking to the children of God and revealing to them who they are. That they are God's children. They are their father's children and they are loved very much. So the first thing that I want to share with you is you are deeply loved of God. It says here in the opening of verse 7, in the Amplified Version, it says, I am writing to all who are beloved of God in Rome. My dear friend, now this might have been addressed to those who are in Rome, but when it comes to born-again believers, when it comes to me, when it comes to you, we are beloved of God. We need to know that we are not hated, we are not rejected. There is somebody who loves us and His name is Jesus. He loved us so much that He came and He died for us in our place. He loved us so much that He was willing to take our place on the cross. He died for us. He paid the ultimate price for our sins so that we could be restored back to God again. So the first thing that we need to know in discovering who we are, my dear friend, as children of God, as it is getting set, that we are children of God, we need to know that our God loves us and He is fighting for us. Another thing that I want to show you is we are God's people. It's so important to know who we are. We are God's people. We are God's children. We are not normal people. We are not people like those who are in the world. We are set apart. The Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So from the moment that you gave your life to Jesus, something happened. There was a change that came in your life. You are not from this world anymore. You are a child of God. You go by a different set of rules. So you need to know which side you are on. You need to know that you are no longer on the dark side, but you are in the kingdom of light. You are an ambassador of heaven. It's important that you know this because as you know this, every time and everywhere that you go, everything that you do, you'll think about what you do first because you'll know that everywhere you are going, you are representing the kingdom of God. Now, the last thing that I want to show you from this scripture before we go into a time of prayer is we are God's people and we are set apart to live for Him and for His purpose. My dear friend, it's so essential that we as born again believers live for God and for His purpose. Now, this purpose may be multifaceted. This purpose may be in ministry. This purpose may be in evangelism, or being apostle, being a prophet, whichever area this purpose is. It might be in business. It might be in working somewhere. It might be in even making a certain contribution to society. Now, we are to be set apart for His purpose. It's important to know that we are to be set apart to do the service of God. Because if we as born-again believers don't know that we are set apart to do the service of God, then who will do the service of God? It's so essential that we know this. My dear friend, it's so essential that we know that we as born-again believers are the ones maintaining the balance in this world by praying that God will bring peace. It's so essential to know that your prayer for the whole world, for peace in the whole world counts. Yes, my dear friend, your prayer, your single prayer as you're praying alone, Sometimes you might think, little old me, does my prayer even count towards anything? Do I make any impact? 
Is this even making a difference? And the answer is yes, it is making a difference. Because God is hearing your prayer and is stopping war and is stopping bloodshed from happening. It's so essential, my dear friend, that we as born-again believers stand in the gap for the world. It's so essential that we as born-again believers stand in the gap for those who aren't saved and we pray and trust God so that they can get an opportunity to salvation. It's so essential that we as born-again believers pray for the political situations in the countries that we're living in. It's so essential that we as born-again believers pray that natural disasters won't happen close to our homes. It's so essential that we as born-again believers pray and press in and intercede on behalf of the rest of creation because our prayer makes a difference. I want to tell you something, my dear friend. When you get on your knees and you speak to God, something amazing happens, something miraculous happens. Do you know what happens? A power is released. It's just that you can't see it. Sometimes you can't see and you can't feel that power. But in the spiritual realm, a power is being released. As you are praying and speaking to the living God, He is coming on the scene. He is bringing a change. So next time when you are praying, never look down on what you are doing, my dear friend. Never look down on the fact that it's only you praying to God. God is hearing your prayer, my dear friend, and He is going to bring a change. God is amazing. So it goes on to say, called to be saints, God's people, and set apart for the sanctified life. That is to be set apart for God and for His purpose. We are set apart for God and for His purpose. My dear friend, it's so essential that we know these things. These are some truths that I've pulled out from the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 7. I want you to go in your spare time when you're free and just meditate on this scripture. Try to understand what it's saying. But in saying that, my dear friend, let us begin to pray. Take your cell phone, your device, just go somewhere private where you can pray, where you can seek God. And even as you go there, my dear friend, begin to lift up praises to God. On this channel, we always begin by praising God. So even as you praise God, trust and believe that God's presence is going to come in that place where you are and God will indeed touch you. In saying that, let's begin to praise Him. Father, You are our Lord, You are our God, and we praise You. You are the God who supplies all our needs. Where would we be without You, God? Both myself and my dear friend, we recognize and we know that without You, we are nothing. We recognize and we know that it is Your grace that is working through us. Lord, thank You for this. We give You praise for this. We give You praise for another day. We give You praise, Lord, that it is Sunday. We're about to go into another week, and by Your grace, we are going to press in and we're going to touch the hem of Your garment, even as we seek You today. And we thank You for this, Lord. We give You all the praise. We welcome Your presence in this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. My dear friend, I want you to start knowing who you are from today. You are not an ordinary person out there. You are a child of God. You've got greatness in you. God has a divine purpose and a destiny for you. You are not a mistake. God made you for a reason. God set up all the chain of events that happened until you were born, my dear friend. So if anyone ever called you a mistake, I want to tell you now as a man of God, I am telling you, you are not a mistake. God loves you very much and God does not make mistakes. God created you and He has a purpose for you. As we go into a time of prayer, understand and know these things. Think and meditate on the things that I've shared with you and God will bless you mightily. In saying that, let's begin to pray. I'm going to begin to pray for you as the Holy Spirit leads me. But even as we go into a time of prayer, I want to encourage you to do two simple things. The first thing that I want to encourage you to do is lift up both your hands and say this with me. Say, Holy Spirit of God, come and touch me today. Come and touch me as I pray along with Evangelist Gabriel. Bring a mighty change for the better. Lord, take me to a deeper place, a greater glory, a greater level, even as I seek you today. Let me understand who I am, Lord Holy Spirit. Do this for the glory of King Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' mighty name, and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. My dear friend, the second thing that I want to encourage you to do is comment down below in the comment section and agree with me. There is so much power in agreement and even as you comment and agree, God is going to bless you. But in saying that, let's begin to pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I pray for my dear friend who is watching this video. Help my dear friend who is watching this video to know who they are. Lord, help your dear child who is watching this video to set aside old mindsets, old ways of thinking that were governed and shaped by the ways of the world, that were governed and shaped by the bad situations that might have happened to them when they were young, that my dear friend who is watching this video is valued by you, that all your children around the world are valued by you, that my dear friend is valued by you and my dear friend is going up to another level. Lord, help my dear friend to understand that you have a divine purpose and a destiny for each and every one of your children and no one is a mistake. Help my dear friend to understand this and to be happy to be themselves. Lord, I pray that you will give my dear friend the grace to love who they are, 
to love who you created them to be, understanding and knowing that you make no mistakes. Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise for all that you are doing in my dear friend's life. And we thank you that even as we go forward, you are going to do something amazing. You are going to do something wonderful. You are going to do something lovely. Lord, we thank you that it is not the end. It is only the beginning. And my dear friend is expecting good things from you. And even as my dear friend expects good things from you, the best is yet to come. Yes, Lord, we understand that there will be times when we face persecutions. There will be times when we face trials. But Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have in Christ that we can believe and we can trust you and you can take us out of those trials. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, that even as your presence is here, my dear friend is going up to a greater glory and you are beginning to do new things in my dear friend's life. You are beginning to do great things in my dear friend's life. You are beginning to move things and to shape things so that my dear friend can go up and not down. You are changing mindsets in my dear friend's life. Past mindsets that were limitations and you are setting my dear friend up to go to greater glories. I thank you for this Lord. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your presence that's in this place. And I thank you that these prayers that we've prayed today, these powerful prayers have been answered. I thank you Lord for the presence of your angels and the presence of your Holy Spirit that never leaves us. I thank you Lord that you never leave us. I thank you Lord that you are with us holding our hand all the time, holding our right hand. And you never leave us. You fight for us Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you never leave us. And we give you all the praise for this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. My dear friend, our Lord is gracious. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is merciful. And he wants to bless you. Always know that. Now, I've got a special announcement for you, my dear friend. Tomorrow from Monday the 21st all the way through to Wednesday the 23rd, we're going to be praying and fasting. And tomorrow, I'm also going to release a special prophetic word for you from the Lord that the Lord has given me concerning what will happen even as you do this fast along with me. Now, my dear friend, I understand and know that not everyone can partake in a fast. Some have physical challenges in their body and the doctor has said no to fasting. Now, my dear friend, if this is you, if I'm speaking to you and the doctor has said you are not able to fast because of a physical condition, then I want to encourage you, you can fast from anything else. Don't fast from food. I'll fast on your behalf. I will pray for you. I'll fast on your behalf and I'll pray for you for you to have a breakthrough. But for everyone else who can join us, whenever it turns 6 a.m. on Monday in your time zone, begin to fast all the way through to 4 p.m. No drinks, no juice, no energy juice, just water. As you drink water and you fast and pray from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, God is going to bless you mightily. God is going to do something amazing. And after 4 p.m., you can begin to eat, you can have a meal. And even as you break your fast, break your fast slowly. But in saying that, my dear friend, we come to the end of this video. I'll see you again tomorrow for the Monday Prophetic Word and our special prayer and fasting session that we are going to have for the next three days. From myself, Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez, until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom and goodbye. If you were blessed by this video and you'd like to give a seed, feel free to do so using any one of the secured links provided in the description. If you would like to partner with us to support the work of the gospel on a monthly basis, then you can do so via Patreon. The link for Patreon as well as other information is also provided in the description. Other than that, my friend, God bless you, God keep you, God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Until we meet again next time, Shalom and goodbye.